The cool weather is a great time to get out in the garden and do some of our garden chores. Today at the top of my list is cleaning up these irises. We are going to trim them back. We're going to clean up all this debris. I'm going to dig them up a little bit and separate some of the rhyme zones. And then we're going to give them a little bit of food so they can have a good punch when they come back in the spring. Hi, my name is Sonia with Suburban Gardening. I'm out here on what I call the hill. Actually, it's the Wild Kingdom. Sitting in the dirt, exactly the place I want to be. And I don't know if you can see in this shot, but we've got 100 feet from end to end behind our house. And a lot of this fence line is filled with irises. So I've got a big job ahead of me to clean these up. The reason I ended up with so many of these irises was about six years ago, I got engaged to a wonderful man and I took him up to the Sacramento area to visit my sister and introduce them. Well, we stayed in a wonderful Airbnb up there. It was on a little farm. And when we arrived, the owner of that Airbnb was in her garden cleaning out her irises. Well, she offered me several of the rhyme zones and I would have loved to have taken them, but I couldn't think how am I gonna get them on the airplane? Well, we were there for a couple of days and the morning that we were getting ready to leave, I asked my fiance if he'd go over and see if that offer was still open for some of those iris rhyme zones. And he came back with two big grocery bags filled. I had no idea if I could get them on the airplane and get them home, but we gave it a try, went right through security, and we got home with all of these irises. Now, I had so many that I did give some away and everybody's been loving them. We've been sharing the irises all over in all the yards. I have several different colors of irises. We have white, yellow, a lavender purple, which is gorgeous, and a burnt orange, which is my personal favorite. That's the one, unfortunately, I have the least of, but I am propagating those. And I wanted to show you how I keep track of what color they are. So I couldn't quite figure out what to do but I ended up with these little tags and they have a circle on the end so it just hooks right up onto the plant. I wrote the color and when the flower comes up, I just hook it right onto the plant. So now I'm out here and the most of the flowers are all gone but I still know what color they are. So that works really good for me. So I'm gonna get down in here and I'm gonna clean out this debris. And one of the reasons we do that is because we have a very bad problem with earwigs and pill bugs. And they like to burrow down in there and eat the plants. And also leaving this debris down there causes rot in the rhyme zone. So we need to give them plenty of air and so they can breathe and not get that rot. The other thing is that iris like to have their tubers showing a little bit above the dirt. And if they're all covered with debris, then the sunshine can't get on them and they can't get enough airflow and they won't perform very well. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna trim these leaves back. Now, that really helps the plant pull up new energy, but particularly here where I am, I get a lot of white fly and they overwinter their eggs on these leaves. So I wanna get those trimmed down and get those out of there. And then I'm gonna dig down in the dirt and pull up some of these rhyme zones so you can see them firsthand. And I'll show you how to plant one in the ground so you can see how it stays above the soil. And then I'm going to take some food and I'm going to sprinkle it down close to the base. And then that way they'll have a nice little energy so they can come back and, and do it in the spring. Now this was quite a treat for me today when I came out on the hill. I have got the most beautiful white irises blooming in January. Now one little thing that's really fun, you can tell these are bearded irises because they have the little fuzzy part right here. If they didn't have that, that means they're a crested iris. I wanted to show you what I found after cleaning up all the debris. As I'm getting in tighter, you can see what's happening here. These rhizomes have grown on top of one another. Now they're smothering the rhizomes that are below. What I need to do is take my shovel and dig these out completely, then pull them apart so I can separate them into individual rhizomes. This is the only way they'll be able to thrive.
I hope you can see down in here. This is the top layer, and this is the middle layer, and this is the bottom layer. I have three layers of iris rhizome stacked one on top of the other. They're not going to do very well like this. So I'm going to dig out this entire batch. But then I'll end up with a whole bunch of brand new rhizomes. Here are some right here. These are fantastic. They have a couple little nodes coming out. I know this is going to grow into a whole new plant and these little babies are going to get big and look just like this one. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to just start prying it apart. I see all of these rhyme zones right here at the front. You just have to muscle them apart. Look at those nice long roots on there and then I'm just going to gather them up in my bucket. They'll either get placed somewhere else in my garden or I will send them off to friends. I know a lot of people, oh look at that, a big old worm. <laughs> I know a lot of people who like to get free plants. While I have this out of the ground, I just wanted to show you how you cut these leaves. Um, you can do this in ground or you can do it after the tubers have already come out. But basically all we're going to do is we're going to cut it in the shape of a V. Just like that, we're going to follow the way that the plant would normally grow. And now this way I've cut off any kind of disease or bacteria that might be on this plant because they hide really well in the winter time. So I'm going to go through and I'll do it to all of these plants just like that and that'll that'll get them ready for spring. When you're ready to put your iris rhizomes into the ground what you're going to want to do is to pull off these little side shoots. You notice they have their own root system. That is a, a completely other plant that's going to grow and become very large. The best way to plant them is to loosen up your soil. Drop a little bit of biotone down in there. Notice I didn't dig very deep. And what I want to do is I want to get these roots kind of over the soil like this. The most important thing is that I'm going to leave this top part here open. And that's pretty much all you need to do. That will root in really tough and make a beautiful plant. If you're going to plant the bulbs, there's a bottom and a top. So the top is always more pointy than the bottom. And you want to just dig down a couple of inches, put your bulb tone in there, and just sink that down in the soil. That should pretty much do it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to separate these and I'm going to plant them all over the place. There are a lot of different types of iris plants. I have two different kinds. I have the Dutch iris, which is actually a bulb, and then I have the one we've been working on today, and that is the bearded iris, or they also called it German iris. And I'm afraid I have a bad habit of saying rhyme zones. Don't know where I got that from, but it's rhizomes. So I stand corrected. Anyway, these are my favorite ones, the bearded irises, but the thing about the Dutch iris is my mom grows them in her yard and it just reminds me of my mom when I see a Dutch iris. So I know that these Dutch irises and the bearded irises can be highly neglected because my mom's got them on the side of her house and I don't think she ever waters them or feeds them or anything. But I dug these up out of her yard and I'm really excited to see how they do. Now the other one, I was down at Rogers Gardens in Newport Beach and I picked up some Dutch iris bulbs. So I want to show you the difference and how the bulbs look so different from the rhizomes. 
There are 10 tiny little bulbs that I got in that package from Rogers Gardens. Look at the difference. So this is just a tiny little bulb. And this is one of my iris rhizomes. Totally different plant. Now these ones do put up a much more delicate flower. As you can see that the foliage is much more delicate than this old big monster. But I'm going to put these in a pot because I'd really love to see how they do. And they really do remind me a lot of my mom. So I just have this little paw right here. My sister gave it to me. And I'm just gonna take about eight of these and I'm gonna punch them down into the soil. I've already wet this soil, so it's, it's just damp. It's not wet, it's just damp. And I'm going to put several of these. These are what, these are what I would consider a young bulb. So I'm anticipating them growing a lot bigger. At my mother's house, they are in quite a large clump. So I'm thinking that they're multiplying down there. So I think this is a pretty good, I get one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna put seven. It's always good to stagger. And then I'm just gonna cover them with soil. Now this is brand new potting soil, so I know that it has enough nutrients in it, but I'll probably come back in a month or so and just maybe put something over the top. Now we get to sit around and wait. I've done a little bit of research over the years on how to plant irises and what are the best environments for them. Well, they like full sun and that's a gimme across the board. And they do well in zones three through nine. Now I'm in a zone 10 and I'll tell you, they do great here as well. But every time I read, they always say that they need to be in a rich, well-draining soil. I don't have that here. I don't have a sandy loom. We mostly have clay. I do amend it often, but these irises, they'll do well in all different types of soil, except a very wet one. They don't like to have their feet wet. They don't like to be soggy. They will rot from the bottom up. So as long as you have a soil that will dry out and then you can get it wet again, they'll do perfect. I wanted to show you these rhizomes in three different stages. Now this one I've been showing you, this is the one I dug up yesterday out of the hill. This one I dug out of some pots about two months ago. It still looks pretty good and when I squeeze this, it is hard as a rock. Now this one I dug up last year and it's been about six or eight months since I've dug this up, but you can see it's got brand new shoots coming up and it's not even in the soil. And this rhizome is very, very hard. So several of these I'm gonna take over to my daughter and put them in her yard. And some of them I'm gonna put in my mom's yard and a few of them I'm gonna take back to the hill because I'm on the search for a particular color that's the burnt orange color and I need to grow them up so I can see what color they are. I'm going to be sprinkling the fertilizer right down on top of the soil because I know there's a couple of storms coming and they're going to push the fertilizer down into the soil right where the roots need it. That job took me a couple of hours, but it's only because I have so many. We'll be seeing flowers early spring, probably early April, and I'll bring you guys back here to take a look. As you can see right here, I have an anomaly. This beautiful little white iris is blooming in the winter time. I don't know why, but I'm really glad we moved out all of that debris. We did a very healthy thing for our iris plants today. Getting that debris out will help keep the fungus down, help keep diseases and pests away. You know, when you have pests inside of debris, they crawl out and get into other parts of your garden. So it's just a great idea to get rid of all of that debris. We also put down fertilizer, and that means that they will have fertilizer ready available in the spring when they start pushing their first growth. So that's all I've got to talk about today, but there's always more. So I'll see you guys next time.